ahead and make an opening statement, then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, well, um, you know, a big weekend kind of heading into us, um, unfortunately, uh, for Michigan State, and we hope everybody's doing well. Uh, they are coming along off their, their recent um, uh, little pause uh, that we didn't play this weekend. And, um, you know, every opportunity creates one uh, for you to take advantage of, and I think our guys have done that. Uh, finishing off our uh, last week's game against Purdue. Um, you know, we had a lot to take in, a lot to talk about. And, uh, you know, very quickly after uh, addressing some of our issues, um, we've been able to really refocus on ourselves. And, um, you know, we have a very, very challenging week. Starts with Iowa. And um, I think, uh, you know, they're one of the best teams in the country. Um, that's a given. But I also think they have a chance to, um, you know, not only win the Big Ten in an unprecedented year, but they also have an opportunity to compete for a national championship. They have all the parts um, that are needed. And uh, Coach McCaffrey and his staff uh, have done an incredible job with this group and their development and uh, just in general. So uh, our, our focus has really been on ourselves, like I said, and uh, we're trying to get a couple things corrected. Um, that we can get back to uh, feeling good about. And, um, you know, hopefully on Thursday night, we're prepared, um, you know, to be ready to battle against, you know, arguably the best team in the league right now. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Alex. Arch, you've mentioned kind of needing to get back focused uh, defensively and get back to maybe some of the things that were go working early in the season. But as you prepare for Iowa, a team that's, you know, as dynamic as they are offensively. Is there anything specific you'll be looking for in this game uh, as it goes along that, that you guys really need to do to maybe show that improvement and maybe get back to some of the principles that you were doing earlier in the year? Yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day, regardless of who you play, you have to hang your hat on, you know, some of the things that you value. And, um, you know, we worked very, very hard in the off season in the fall and in the early part of this year to really build our defense to be one that's you know, one that we can carry on throughout the course of the year against the best teams um, that we play. And, um, you know, I think being solid and guarding the ball is essential. Uh, I think being able to handle one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the post is essential. And um, I think not giving up easy baskets um, is something that, um, you know, you have to take a lot of pride in. And, um, you know, we've really fallen short in our one-on-one -on -one defense. Um, that being said, you know, not being able to be organized and communicate and, and give great effort in transition has led to a lot of, um, you know, easy ones, easy threes. And uh, if you just look at our three-point field goal percentage defense in conference alone, um, you're not going to be able to be successful um, when you're giving up the amount of threes and at the percentage we're giving up. And it's not for lack of trying, it's for lack of fundamentals, it's for lack of you know, for a better word, doing your job, you know, and at the end of the day, we, we've had a number of breakdowns and uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, it's accountability, number one, from myself and our staff of being able to really do a better job with our practice sessions. We've had a very hard time practicing, probably like a lot of teams. We've played a lot of games with very few opportunities to really, you know, take a deep breath and see where you're at and work on things. And uh, with all those games comes a lot of minutes comes injuries, it comes guys that aren't available and your practices become choppy and you try to manage your team to get to the games the best that you can. And uh, by doing that, you rob yourself of the things that, you know, you really, uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, need to be in place every day to be good against the teams in this league. So I think as we go to Iowa, you know, their transition offense, their ability to shoot the ball is, um, is really staggering. And, um, you just have to add in the element that they probably have the best player in college basketball inside and out as well. So they're their own unique problem, but I think for our team to not give up easy baskets, to be able to get our defense set, are we guarding the ball? Are we in proper position and off the ball? Are we doing what we're supposed to do in terms of early work in the post? You know, just the simple stuff that you probably start with in October, we've had a lot of slippage in. And uh, to me, that's really, um, you know, been a gradual decline as January has started. And um, I think for us, we have to give great effort on the ball. We're going to have to be there on shooters. We can't get beat running in transition. 
And, um, you know, at the end of the day, in the one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have to have some pride that we're going to be able to do a pretty good job of being able to guard our, our, our man. And, um, you know, I think when it comes to Iowa, they present the, probably the greatest challenge you can for a team that's trying to strive to get their defense back in order. Because if you are having some success against them, if you are uh, able to, you know, uh, withstand um, their barrage of stuff that they can do, um, you know, the, hopefully that's a positive sign that we've gotten better. And that's the big key for this team. The big key for this team right now is to sort of embrace this moment, get back to practicing really hard, get our guys feeling good about themselves in terms of how they're working. And I think we'll see improvement. Dustin. Archie, you've obviously been asked a lot over the years about just uh, the struggles that this team and this program has had shooting. And when you look at, again, not just this season, uh, but overall, what do you think has sort of held this group back, uh, held, held, you know, uh, Indiana back in your tenure from being a, a good outside shooting team? And what do you think you have to fix to become long-term better uh, in that facet? Well, a number of things. I think at the end of the day, shooters shoot. You know, um, I was a good shooter. And I was a good shooter at a young age all the way through college. And I played for a lot of different coaches and a lot of different styles. Shoot, shooters shoot. And I think at the end of the day, the quality of shot that we're getting is always something that the staff is mindful of. And I think confidence that, uh, you know, those are the ones that you're getting on time, on target, you're going to make. But I think from a consistency standpoint, um, you know, our shooting has just been inconsistent because, you know, most of the time, uh, from a percentage standpoint, it's been an inconsistent shooting period of time for us. We don't have knockdown lights out uh, shooters. But that being said, I like the quality of shot we're getting right now. I think that um, as we look at our team and we evaluate some things, we're getting we're getting some good looks. And when you have a guy like Trace who commands a lot of attention, those guys are going to continue to get good looks. And I think for us, isn't to really dwell on that we're not shooting it well, it's what we can do to continue to kind of improve our confidence level, uh, find a way to continue to get guys in rhythm on time. And, um, you know, it sort of will, will come back around for us. That, that usually is how it works. Um, here recently, we haven't hit. Uh, in the Purdue game, we didn't hit. and uh, But in the Nebraska game, we did hit. Wisconsin, the game before that, we did hit pretty good. Um, you know, before that, I think Maryland, we didn't hit real well. We ended up winning the game. We had a good defensive performance. Um, and maybe even the Penn State game prior to that, you know, wasn't great. But we've been able to have some shooting nights where we've made more than, than our fair share. Um, and we've had some nights that have been off. And that's how probably this team's going to be. You know, hopefully we can continue to become a more consistent shooting team. I think Al can shoot the ball a lot better. I think Rob's got to be more confident shooter with his open ones. Um, he's shown that um, Armand has shown stretches of being really consistent. He's just getting back. Um, and I think Anthony can really add to that. Jerome can really add to that, which those guys have shown. Putting it all together, though, and being a team that's very confident in itself, you know, to me is a team that's working at it every day the right way and uh, continues to believe that if we continue to work to get the good ones and those guys get them, that they'll make them. And um, at some point it'll come back around. But to look back four years and start to retract shooting percentages, um, I can't really say that it's an offensive philosophy that we don't like to make shots. I think at some point in time, shooters make shots and, and guys got to step up and make some. We got to keep creating better looks and keep working with them. But there's no doubt about it. The inconsistency um, from the three point line is something that frustrates you. But we've been in a lot of games where we haven't shot well in one. I think the more frustrating thing for me right now is in three-point shooting, the more frustrating thing for me and our staff is free throw shooting. Um, free throw shooting is absolutely killing us right now. And uh, it's deflating. It hurts uh, when you can't make them. And at the end of the day, you come up empty. Um, so my focus is in three-point shooting right now. That, that'll find its way to have some good and bad. But, you know, we have to be able to be a better free throw shooting team if we're going to be able to win some of the games on our schedule. Okay, hey, Zach, last question. I guess Archie asking about Iowa specifically. Obviously, Garza's, you know, kind of reputation precedes him in terms of what he did and what he won, what he achieved last year. And yet, a lot of his offensive numbers look even better this year. He's shooting better from three. Um, he's better overall from the floor. Um, you know, he's averaging more points per game. Just are there things you can point to that maybe he's even better at offensively than he was a season ago when obviously he was already a very good offensive player? Um. 
you know, he can step out and shoot the three as consistent as their guards. And he's probably looking for it a little bit more maybe this year than last. I don't have what he did last year in terms of his attempts. But I do think from a three-point shooting perspective, he's much more dangerous here uh, right now than he's ever been. And he can shoot upwards of eight or ten a game. And uh, he's making close to 50% if he's not already hitting that. So add in that element of a lot more three-point attempts, in my opinion, um, you know, he's obviously, um, you know, very dangerous. But he's one of the more unique players that you'll see. He's got great size. He's got great physicality. Um, and he doesn't jump that high, and he probably doesn't run that fast. But you will never find a guy that you watch play on film that moves and works like he does. I mean, great scorers have a knack to get the ball. Great scorers have a knack to, to be, you know, get to the foul line. But this guy right here never stops moving. And it's a credit to him. It's also a credit to their system. You know, their pace is great. Their motion is great. But he does not take a break. He does not give you an inch in terms of being able to catch your breath when you're defending him. If he's posting, you're in trouble. If he's running to the basket, it's every time. If he's moving in their motion on the perimeter, he's ready. And I just think there's no possession that he really just takes a kind of a, you know, some guys take their wind and maybe they take a possession off from posting or some guys don't run as hard throughout the course of the game. He's always the same and it's the same every game. And the greatest compliment I can give him is uh, he just never allows the defense off the hook. There's never a possession where he's not uh, attacking you in some way. And, um, He's got an unbelievable three level he offensive rebounds. He posts, he has both shoulders from 10 to 12 to 14 feet off the lane or facing up. He shoots that shot as well as any player you'll see. And then you add in the free throw shooting and the three point line. You're getting a guy that's averaging 28, 30 a game for a back to back, you know, really a session. His improvement started in his freshman year. It carried over. He's continued to work. Um, but I hate to just talk about him because I think their team um, and their depth and the quality of the players that they have around them are, are, are terrific as well. It's a great blend. I think that's why they're so good is because you have to deal with somebody on every catch on their team. Coach, thank you very much.